welcome to St. Luke's Chapel. For those in chapel with us, we will continue to wear our masks and keep social distancing. Um, for those at home, do grab some grape juice or some wine and a cracker and share in the sacraments when we have uh, communion here. The um, service today is streamed on Facebook and then will be put on YouTube. Let us pray. God, we come to you in this hour of worship to give thanks for all that you have given us as we seek forgiveness for any wrongdoing that we may have done. We ask that you guide us, guard us, and protect us with your might as we offer ourselves to your service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. prayers today, let us remember the sick and the suffering and all people for whom our prayers are offered. We pray for those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for David Silsby and for Robert Ballander. David Silsby and his wife Chris used to come here to St. Luke's and they moved to Canandaigua, and they gave us the piano that's downstairs. So um, David has suffered with Alzheimer's for the last seven years and died on um, Wednesday of this week. Robert Ballander is Leo Ballander's younger brother, and Marie emailed me and told me that he died yesterday morning. And uh, I got to know Robert through the years, and. Whenever he and Leo got together, um, Finland was very present. They were Finnish people, and <laughs> they worked well together as a comedic team. So they were, they were very knowledgeable with their stories. So, 
And uh, Bob's wife, Rose, was just a wonderful and devout Christian. So our prayers are with them. We're glad to see Linda with us today, who's got a new knee. And uh, she is uh, just a week and a half out of surgery. And had rehab for a week. And I watched her do a cartwheel out in the um, parking lot today. So she's getting right back into her gymnastics. So, um, so that's good. Karen, wonderful to have you with us. I'm glad you made it through the pandemic without um, any problems. And uh, Karen and her cousin, Shelly Chafee, celebrated their birthday. The Irish lassies did. They celebrated their birthday on St. Patrick's Day. And so it's good to have you with us. And uh, Shelly must still be celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you all with us. It's uh, good to be here. This has been a difficult week for our nation. We had the tragedy of another serial killing. This time, it was mostly Asian American people. And once again, we're reminded of prejudice. We're reminded of hate. We're reminded of things that human nature seems to bring about. As I was doing my prayers this week, I, I looked at my self because it's Lent, and we're supposed to look at ourselves. And I looked back upon my own life, and I recalled some of the prejudices that I had and had to overcome. And I stopped to think more deeply about that. Prejudice has to be a learned thing. I think that when we're born and when we're toddlers and infants, we just generally love everyone because we know everyone loves us. And those that should love us and don't, we do find others that do. And then for some reason we begin to get ideas that people that might be different than ourselves, that there's something not right about that. If they look different, if they believe differently, if they worship differently. And that has to be something that we have learned through life itself. And I'm convinced that some of the prejudices that I had were learned from the generation before me. And that some of the Prejudices that I had were learned from the environment in which I grew up. That does not justify prejudice. Because there is no justification for prejudice. As we seem to be slipping away from morality and the church, I think we forget one thing, and that is that we are all born into life. We believe in the image of God, that God created all of us, along with the help of our human selves. But we forget 
that the importance of everyone is that they're here at this time for a reason. And we cannot eliminate people. Many people have their prejudices because of an incident that may have happened in their life. But yet they turn and turn the blame on a whole segment of creation. Because one bad apple spoiled the whole barrel. It's very difficult being human, to say the least. But we can do our share by overcoming our weaknesses, and prejudice is one of our weaknesses. As I went through life, I carried a special gift. And I had to fight my way through life because people thought that gift, because they couldn't understand it, was evil. That it was satanic. And I couldn't understand when I used my gift to locate missing persons or to solve a homicide case find lost jewelry, find a lost pet. I couldn't understand how they thought that that was evil. But it was because of what they had learned. And most of those people had learned it in a church, in the Christian faith. And the strength of my faith saw me through that. So when I see people being gunned down because they're different, when I see people being beat on because perhaps their lifestyle is different, perhaps the color of their skin is different, or their features are dif different, I can understand a bit, but not fully, why that occurs. And it's simply because they are different. Wouldn't it be a boring world if God made all of us alike? I can't think of a soul that would want to look like me, let alone act like me. And I can't think of a soul I would want to look like or act like. Because I found the Spirit of God that dwells in me. And each of you have found the Spirit of God that dwells in you. And we have to trust that the Spirit of God dwells in all people. People get sidetracked in many of the hundreds of homicide cases I have worked, not one of those cases occurred where I didn't think. I wonder what the moment was where this person's mind took them in a wrong direction. That they felt they had to commit that crime where they didn't have control over themselves enough to refrain from that. We can find any excuse to justify our weaknesses. We can blame it on anyone and everyone. But we don't generally blame it on ourselves. But in this Lenten season, Let's look at ourselves for a moment and know in our hearts our prejudices. Know in our hearts our weaknesses and ask for God to help us to overcome them. I have a lifetime 
of regret over some of the things I've said and done. And many times I passed it off in a joking manner. It's not a joke. It's not a joke to demean. It's not a joke to try to destroy someone. It's not a joke to be prejudiced. Because when we are doing that, we're questioning God. We're questioning His wisdom. And we fail to understand God's wisdom. And we neglect to recognize the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And God wants us to overcome that, overcome that no matter how old we are. This week was a real awakening. If only people will stay awake. This week we should understand that all people have a right to be here. That the Spirit of God dwells in all people. And they have a right to be here. They have a right to worship differently than we do. They have a right to look differently than we do. When there was a ban on Muslims coming into the United States, I couldn't help but think, we're all in perhaps different boats, but we're all headed to the same shore. All the great religions believe in a supreme being that created us, and that we return to that dwelling place. This morning's bulletin, I said, let's look beyond the cross. Let's look beyond the suffering here on earth, no matter what we go through, and know, and know that there is something beyond this. Because you can feel it. It's not something you learn, it's something you know instinctively by the Spirit of God that dwells in you. And when we go through difficult times, take yourself beyond that cross and know that this too shall pass. And that we can overcome any obstacle in life to fulfill God's purpose for us. These last weeks I was praying for Linda who had surgery. And in my prayers, I called to mind the little engine that could. And I kept thinking, Linda, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And today she's here to tell us, I knew I could, I knew I could, I knew I could. Because she thought beyond the suffering. She thought beyond the cross. We all have crosses to bear, but we need to take care of ourselves and in so doing, find the love of God that dwells in us and share it in our world and not be selective. Share it with all people. And when we can do that, there will be peace on earth. And that's what God wants for us, is to know his love. But most of all, to love ourselves and share that love in the world in which we live. If someone is different, it's very probable that they've crossed your path because 
They can bring something new into your life through that difference that will bring you a better understanding of your own spirit. Because our journey is simply a journey to strengthen our spirit, to strengthen our faith, to prepare for the life that is to come. So as we listen today, listen to the sorrow and the grief in our world over a needless, heinous act by an individual who didn't know the Spirit of God, perhaps, that dwelt in him. And let us go forth. Let us pray for his family. Let us pray for him. People don't agree with that often. But think of the sorrow his people are going through. And as I understand it, his parents are the one that turned him in. They knew that had to be done. So let us go out of this chapel today with a renewed spirit after we receive the sacraments. Let us go out of the chapel today with a renewed spirit of love for all people. And let us pray for God to diminish our prejudices to the point that they're gone, to the point that all we feel is love. And then let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The offering basket will be in the back of the church on your way out. Please remember that we do have bills we got to pay, so if you could leave an offering, that would be great. And let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Our offertory is number 530, verses 1 and 2.
we ask your blessing upon this bread and this wine that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we ask God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of this Holy Communion as we pray for all of Christ's Church and the world. God, we come before your altar this day asking for forgiveness for any sins or offenses that we have done against you, our God, against your creation, against our neighbors, or against ourselves. We ask forgiveness for these, our sins. We give thanks for all that you have given us, for our family and for our friends, for our church and our parish family, for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come, that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. Alyssa Vanderpool, Dorothy Middaw, Donna Lesh, Beth O'Donnell, Steve Frazier, Ann Price, Gail Yost Moika, Nancy Zamoyski, Amy Zamoyski, Kathy Garrett, Katie Ahart, Katie Smith, Larry Kataki, Jackie Kataki, George Bowen, Gary Gentilly, Cynthia Halstead, Cindy Burdick, Terry Collins, Joseph Robert Katz, Ward Hungerford, Jack Carr, Richard Vinskoy, Gloria Kunzman, Bob Wilcox, Mary Burkle, Greg, Martha Brewster, Bill Palmer, Sally Marks, Ed Gilbert, John, Sue Rice, Betty Pierce, Gavin Kataki, Letha Shaler, Mike Scorsese, Monica Patrick, Tom Smith, Pamela Whitehill, Emma Burkle, Bonnie Cummings, John Irving, Kenny Wilson, Jeff Ackler, Marty Deutsch, Patty Van Gorder, Butch Stamer, Arlene Birch Coleman, Virginia Johnson, Jeff Jeffords, Lula Gorey, Joanne Conrad, Judy Kozel Redsicker, Bernie Morris, Linda Long, Russell Dillard Jr. We trust you, faith, that you will touch them with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially this day for your servants, David Silsby, Robert Ballander, we trust with faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received them into your heavenly kingdom. Be with their families and friends as they mourn their loss, that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins, and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us exchange peace with one another here in the chapel by nodding to one another, and at home you can embrace those that you love.
night before he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he shared it among his friends. And he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting through our faith and our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us, following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray.
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you have fed us with the spiritual food of the blessed body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Send us out into the world, giving us the things to do that are necessary for your creation. As we offer ourselves to him who died and rose again, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, God, we ask you to be with us in the days ahead. Keep us ever mindful of your love for us. Be with our service men and women. Harbor them in safety. We pray for loved ones that have gone before us, especially today. We pray for David Silsby and give your love and faith to his wife, Chris. We pray for Robert Ballander and trust your faith that he and Leo are rejoicing in the power of your spirit that was in them. And I'm sure that they're having a wonderful time together as they have once again been reunited. We pray for our nation during these most difficult times. Help us to overcome this pandemic that we may all work together and do our part to share in the healing of our nation. We pray especially this day for the anger and the prejudice that exists in our world. As we're aware of that, help us to find your wisdom to overcome that. Help us to know that you created all people, and that all people have a right to be here. Help us to know the differences among us, and know that those differences create a wonderful tapestry in life. And keep us ever mindful of your love for us as we continue our journey. We ask all this through the example of your love as you gave it to us, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May he be with us this day, and remain with us always. Amen. 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 Our closing song is number 163, verses 1 and 2.